morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 451 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Tuesday, August 20th. God, I can't believe we're so far in August. It just went by so fast. 2024. And uh, it's going to be, I think, I think finally a day with a little bit of sunshine here at the Beaver Lodge after about like two or three days of gray. Three gray. days here. Yes. Yes. Three days of gray, two days of sun, and a partridge and a pear tree. Um, so <laughs> I'm your host, the Eager Beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master. The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. Um, probably not as fun a show for you today as yesterday, but that would be kind of hard to do. <laughs> Hopefully, still a fun show. <laughs> Mr. Grizzly, how is your mental health doing today, sir? Well, sir, when I, when I woke up, I was feeling more doom, gloom, and dread than I did yesterday. But um, after taking Lola for a walk and sitting down here for my coffee and uh, having my morning constitutional, feeling much, much better, um, feeling good about myself right now. And then of course, when I, when I read things like this, I just, I just chuckle. It's like, I don't know who Carson Jarima is, but for some reason they're delusional and maybe need some medication because their statement in the national post, uh, their, their lead or byline was a Pierre Polyev, the next leader of the free world. Now, I know that there's over 200 countries in this world, and I think about 190 of them have uh, democracy and freedom and elect their own leaders. And last I checked, there wasn't an election for leader of the free world. And nations around the world don't elect the Canadian parliament, and the Canadian system of Westminster parliamentary democracy does not elect a prime minister. So how this delusional individual of, by the name of Carson Jarima in the National Post believes that Pierre Polyev is the leader of the next leader of the free world is completely beyond me. And I, and I suggest that individual be taken away from their keyboard and sent to see a doctor and take some medication because this is just completely delusional. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm somebody with mental health issues, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, according to the National Post, Carson Jarima is a comment editor at the National Post based in Edmonton, was raised in Calgary, rural Manitoba, previously post media as national podcast lead, producing the award-winning true crime series The Dark North and the current affairs show 10-3, Canada Covered. Jarima has been an editor at the Edmonton Journal, Winnipeg Sun, and McLean's. He holds a Bachelor of Arts in Political Studies from the University of Manitoba and a Master of Arts from the University of Waterloo. So considering all of this, I'm uh, not quite sure how he uh, arrives to this conclusion. Now, here's the thing. While Mr. Grizzly is correct that nobody elects a leader of the free world, usually when we describe, well, 
sorry, when we, usually when the Americans describe the president of the United States, they refer to them as leader of the free world. Whether that is an actual thing worldwide or not, but here's the thing. Yes, this is a direct attempt to counter-program the fact that Prime Minister Trudeau is often actually is considered one of the leaders, or at least the leader of the progressive free world at the moment. But that only happens because very specific circumstances. There's really only one way that a Canadian could ever have that role is if it happens to be at the time that that Canadian leader happens to be the one out of all the bigger countries that sort of like make decisions and stuff like that, that happens to have been serving longer than any other. He's the longest serving. It was, uh, it was Merkel for a while, Angela Merkel for a while. She stepped down. And then she stepped down and then it became Prime Minister Trudeau because he had been there long. So that's about the only way. Mm-hmm. And then again, how much leader of the free world can you be when you're Canada in a country, in a world that has China and India and Russia and Israel and the United States, yeah. Brazil, and all countries Mexico, that are France, way you know. huge, way huger, right? Yes. Now, Canada, we always punch above our weight. This is not putting ourselves down. But no, let, we're only 41.6 million. We're not, Mexico's like almost 200 million. Yes, Let, let's be realists here, like this. When's the last time in your entire lifetime a, prime, a Canadian prime minister stood up in front of a, on, in front of a mic on an international say, hey, everybody, we're doing this, and everybody said, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. It never has. Like, so, so Carson, Carson needs to put down the Twitter machine <laughs> and seek medical help. So Pierre Polyev, as the leader of the free world, because should he win, he will be the new kid on the block. That's it. With with no history of leadership of a nation, and no After reason for any other, years. and no reason for anybody from any other nation to give any trust to him, without him having earned it, other than the fact that he's leading Canada and we have a reputation, which we know he will systematically proceed to destroy. Well, I mean, he's so, doing a good job of it on his own right now by showing Russian jets flying over Canadian <laughs> prairie. Right. So uh, the person says, you know, dismiss me as stumping for my guy if you want to look around this place and there's nothing but liberal government failures, blah, blah, blah. So you, know, there, you, you get the idea of the tone right now. Um, you know, it's talking about all the things that the liberals apparently mucked up and, right? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then, you know, and then they have this whole other thing, like was trying to describe whatever his policies and just trying to describe him as some type of visionary or something. Um, he's not. There's absolutely nothing original in what he's saying, and for everything that he's saying, he still hasn't given us any idea as to how he's going to accomplish any of these things. So, Pliyev is the leader of the free world. Is, uh, 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 let the child crawl before you think that they're going to sprint through a marathon. Okay, first, uh, that's not happening. Then, uh, in the other department of uh, blowing sunshine, well, uh, and and that's bus. exactly what that is for Polyev. That's inflating his narcissistic ego by calling him the leader of the next leader of the free world. That that's all that is. It's trying to win favor with him because let's face it, if you ever called Prime Minister Trudeau leader of the free world, he'd be like, maybe you should put the bong down. Because you must be high to think I'm the leader of the free world. Elder statesman? Yes, certainly. Well-respected right. individual? Absolutely. Leader of the free world? No. No. Right. A That's... leader in a free world? Yes. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then you had this other person... Um, oh God, from Australia, I oh, think it yeah. is Clara Lehman or whatever, Clara Lehman or something Lehman, like yeah. that. Um, she's stumping for Polyev now too. She's, she's not very, very smart. Yeah. No, no, not, 
not very smart at all. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to say the not very smart thing. Not very daft. Uh, um, uh, let me put, let's say probably bought and paid for. A propagandist. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not going to say not very smart. Because probably, you know, a lot of these people maybe are smart. Yeah. But you, you, yeah, they play, they play ignorant and dumb to, uh, yeah, and get away like, with it. Right. Like, as I, I've said on a show before, if you've ever heard of the concept of gay for, gay for pay, mm -hmm. oh, yes. when it comes to making adult movies or whatnot like this, I believe there's, there's such thing as cray for pay. I think you're correct. In our uh, political system. As evidenced by, what's her name? Um, oh, I can see her face now. Uh, American woman. Oh, uh, MTG? Candace, Candace Owens. Oh, Candace Owens. Yes. Yeah, th that's another one that's uh, a little special. Um, so she put out some stuff yesterday. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm just going to say, like I said, somebody just did a little wiki search and Claire Lehman is an alt-right Australian anti-feminist and transphobic crank <laughs> who has been described as Australia's mistress of the intellectual dark web. She appears to blame everything bad, everything including obesity on feminists, who she argues are destroying the West, along leftists, social justice warriors, and what she calls blank statists in the context of race and intelligence. By this, she means mainstream scientists who reject racist pseudoscience. Lehman is the editor-in-chief and founder of the right-wing online magazine Quillette. She identifies as an Australian nationalist and opposes multiculturalism. She's a fan of Jordan Peterson and has connections to white nationalist Emil Kierkegaard. Um... Not a good so, person. Yeah, really not a good person. And um, she tweeted, everyone is focused on Kamala and Trump right now, but I actually think the most interesting politician in the Anglosphere is Pierre Polyev. She doesn't know a damn thing about him. No, and I responded. That's, a, that's, a, that's an IDU thing. Yeah, I responded that's an ID. to her accordingly <laughs> saying, he's a complete, you know nothing about this man. He's an egocentric narcissist who is a danger to democracy. Yep. So here's the thing. Somebody is clearly not confident somewhere in the structure that is pushing Pierre to be our prime minister that he's going to be able to get the job done. And they're thinking he needs a lot of help because they're creating this Thing is, oh my God, look at all these international people that are saying, like, they don't know him. No, they don't. The, kids, this is, again, not to punch ourselves down. This is Canada. Let's be realistic. There is nobody in Australia looking at, oh, who's the leader of the opposition? And, you know, is he our next great white hope? <clears throat> no. Focus on white. Worldwide. <laughs> right? That is not happening. So this is an IDU thing where Daddy Harbour contacts his friends in other countries, for example, like Australia, for example, where Murdoch is, and says, hey, I guess write your standard, hey, hey, he's going to be like the best leader, what not thing, like I said, just insert the name Polyev there. Here's a couple of things that you need to know about him that you can throw in to make it, to make it sound like you know about the place. and public. They've never heard of this guy. No, they have no idea who he is. They've never heard of this guy. It's just IDU talking points. Right? So, any center-right leading politician in the US, UK, Australia should be looking very closely at his approach. He sidesteps culture war issues. Bull. Uh, well, there we go. Tell me tell me you know nothing about him. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> because he's literally a walking culture war. Yes. And hones in on the housing affordability and inflation. See that that's the that, that's the couple of lines in the email that uh, she got to say to include there. He's the only he's the only in bold and italicized center right politician in the Anglosphere that is able to tell a story to young people about why they can't afford a house. And because he can tell you that story, he will likely win the next Canadian election. And that caused me. And then of course she posted a, a little YouTube, uh, link to a YouTube thing. Uh, where uh, there's video of 15 minutes housing hell, how we got here and how we get out, uh, that he posted eight months ago. Mm -hmm. A little late to the party there, Claire. Uh, and she tweeted this 
and this is where we're going to have some fun. On the very day, the very day that Pierre decided to issue a video of him telling a story. The thing that she says that he can do pretty much better than anyone else in the Anglosphere, a story that his own party pulled in an hour or maybe a little more later because it was told so badly and scripted so hilariously and illustrated so devastatingly horribly. Claire, your sense of timing. Impeccable. Impeccable. Seriously. On the same day, Pierre could be the leader of the free world. This guy could tell a story. It's like, and then Pierre comes out with, let me tell you a story. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> and here's the other thing. Yesterday, we're talking, we're going like, why did they need to get that out so fast? Mm-hmm. Look over here, look over here, would, not over there. Because I'm like sitting there and I'm watching like, like why is he wearing the white cowboy hat? Because mm. I thought like that this was like, clip of him talking like just a day or a few ago no no that was a clip of him talking during the calgary stampede mm -hmm. so that means it wasn't something that they took at a recent rally and then cobbled no, together no. they've had weeks this is this is what they did with weeks yes this wasn't like a 30 second job or do this overnight i mean when did the calgary stampede how, how long have you been back mr grizzly uh let's see uh six weeks <laughs> four weeks i don't know Four weeks, yeah. Yeah, like we were in the episodes like 422, 428, we're at 451. So, so maybe like two, 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 two to three weeks. Seriously? You had two to three weeks to work on this and that's what you came up? That's worse. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, oh my God. So I don't know how far it made it in the media, but it did make it to the Daily Hive. Um, so they wrote about it, but they basically just did, you know, Calgary disorder, YYC's mm -hmm. tweet and then wrote, wrote about it. But it seems that it was enough <clears throat> for um, Sarah Fisher to be asked about it. Yeah, I have the story here. The video was removed. Mistakes happen. Uh, said Sarah Fisher, director of communications for the Conservative Party of Canada. Fisher also pointed to a 2011 liberal ad which used stock images of Canadians rather than real supporters. Okay. Now. Okay. Again. Who was prime I, minister at the time? Again. What party was in power in 2011? Harper. Now, now here's the thing. Okay. Mistakes happen. I am willing to be as generous as the next person gets and come. Mistakes do happen, right? You send out a tweet. You want to say, this, this will not achieve it. And for some reason, you forget the word not. Mm -hmm. You thought it in your head, but you didn't type it or autocorrect fixed it for you. When you proofread it or read it, you intended to see not. You read not, even though it was no longer there, and you press send. And then you've literally just said the opposite of what you want to say. Like, uh, for example, like the Nazis were not good people. And then the not gets eliminated and you say the Nazis are good people. And then you see that and you go, oh my God, delete, delete, delete. <laughs> right? Mistakes happen. Now, of course, you're in a communication shop. Usually there are several layers of approval, particularly at party leadership. And it is Sarah Fisher's job as the director of communications to make sure that mistakes do not happen. Of course, nobody's perfect. Now, one mistake, two mistakes, mm -hmm. three mistakes, that many mistakes in the span of three to four minutes, that does not just happen. No. <laughs> this is just that is colossal epic failure. Those are mistakes that are committed, not mistakes that just happen. And those are mistakes that are committed because the people that made the mistakes clearly did not think they were mistakes. Well, obviously. They were, 
So many. I mean, if you did not catch the foothills of Indonesia and the Rockies of Utah, and the fact that there is no possible way that the pictures of those fighter planes could be pictures of new Canadian fighter jets because we don't have them flying in our skies yet. Mm -hmm. And you're the director of communications and you missed all of those. Let's play. What is more likely? Applause. Yeah. That these were mistakes that just happened or that these are things that were put in and um let's see you saw them and you smacked them on the back and you said my god this is brilliant let's go with this now sarah darling come here that's not good enough you're gonna have to come up with a better answer and try again okay boo boo kitty <laughs> mistakes just happen and then not only mistakes just happen but let's quickly pivot and say, hey, the liberals use stock footage of, <gasps> insert a gay gasp, Canadians. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. At least they managed to get stock footage of Canadians. Canadians. <laughs> I mean, just, you just took us like, there's a song in French, Faire le tour du monde en trois minutes et six <laughs> We went to Serbia, we went to Ukraine, we went to Indonesia, we went to North Dakota, we went to... Slovenia. <laughs> Like uh, <laughs> around the world in 80 seconds. Um, <laughs> Jules Verne would be so freaking proud. Oh, no kidding. Well, there's a, a direct. So in CTV's press release said liberals say the Tories use uh, images of Russian jets. Okay. The Tories haven't existed in over 20 years. First off, let's address that. Stop calling them something they aren't. No. Number one. Number one. Number two, liberals say, because I'm looking here right at this quotation in a CBC article that says, shockingly, Mr. Pierre Polyev's dream for Canada includes Russian fighter jets, an Su-17 and what appears to be an Su-27, MiGs, flying over our glorious prairies on a training mission. This comes as Russia continues its illegal, unprovoked, unprovoked war of choice against Ukraine and the international rules that keep us all safe. A press release from... Defense Minister Bill Blair's office. How much you want to bet they made damn sure they knew what they were talking about before that press release came out? They didn't just um, say those are Russian jets. They confirmed that they were Russian jets. So, CTV, retract your story because you're embarrassing yourselves. And stop calling them Tories. They aren't. No. That's just a branding thing. Stop. You know, the concept of guilt by association, this is credibility by association. They're associating they're themselves for. to the legacy of Brian Mulroney and previous Joe Clark and Defen Baker and exactly. all them. They haven't earned that. No. It, and th because that, Canadians need to remember like this. When the Conservative Party of Canada was created, that was a brand new party with zero history. And mm -hmm. they were granted the credibility of the entire Tory legacy, which they proceeded to torch, which is why... Karen Vecchio is gone, which is why Alain Reyes is gone, which is why Brian Mulroney actually had kinder words for Justin Trudeau than he ever had for Stephen Harper <laughs> or Pia Polyev, which is why, um, you know, maybe why, I can't say is for maybe why Caroline Meehan decided not to run after all, which mm -hmm. is why Sabrina Madao was probably rejected. Mm -hmm. Right? This is... <laughs> These are not in any way, shape, or form Tories, which is why Charles Adler probably accepted that Senate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? So let's. Il faut se calmer le pompon un peu. As we say in French, we need to sit down and calm down a bit. All right. Um, so, yeah, the, the, whatever. And here's the other thing about this whole. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Stock footage thingy mm -hmm. disaster. Um, uh, oh, darn, I kind of forgot my thought. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. But the uh, it'll come back to me. But the other element of this is that as this is going on, we are seeing tons of images for some reason of 
Pierre Polyev at events mm-hmm. that it seems he's not really at. It, yeah, and I, I, I'm reluctant to jump on the bandwagon of it's faked, it's photoshopped, and it's AI. I'm reluctant to do it. But, but it's beginning to look a lot like garbage. <laughs> Everywhere you click. I mean, the number it, one thing with photo, with AI, right, is mm-hmm. hands. Yeah. They're, they're, For some reason, people yeah. don't have five fingers. The hand, the arms don't seem to be attached to anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some of this going on here. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's some weirdness going on. I don't know if it's fake. I'm not a photo expert, so I can't say definitively that it is. I do have uh, a feeling that a lot of people uh, who are, are better at this than I am when it comes to detecting AI and and um, Photoshop have been coming to say this is not real. But until I have an actual forensic photographic expert say, oh, no, this is completely fake and here's how I can prove yeah. it to you, I'm reluctant to hop on the bandwagon. Again, though, it really looks like, look, paint by numbers, <laughs> the, the portrait's being painted because all the colors are there. Yeah, there's... And there's a there's a few others like that's the one. There's some that have like a collage of like of three or four of them. That he's there's one where he's standing in front of a crowd where he has his hands up. That's supposed to be a this big Filipino you know mm-hmm. celebration. And it's like that just looks like they took a photo of him like that and then they put a background in front of it. And like I don't know if any of it's real or not, but it doesn't. Uh, you know, I, I question it. Yeah. So there's a lot of this stuff, but again. If you are, if you are generating Im- AI images, altered images, or mm-hmm. images where you are photoshopped in to scenes that make it look like you're standing in front of adoring crowds, at the same time where we have actual, genuine video. Mm-hmm. Live stream. Of the Prime Minister being in crowds. Right, mingling with people. Well, and, right. and it's funny. All of a sudden, they have great photographs, whereas so many of them before were potato quality. Mm. Have you noticed that? Like these new, this new round of photographs, they've got like a, a depth of field, a, a yep. soft fuzzy. It's a, a focus pull. Then before, so many of their videos and things were were quite literally potato quality. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. see, everything about this team, right, is counter programming. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right. So we have the prime minister, without giving his itinerary, who's showing up places and actually mingling with people. Again, showing warmth. Mm-hmm. Humanity. Showing joy. Personality. Personality. Showing he's got people key skills. Yeah. Showing he's actually mingling in a crowd where people want to touch him and talk to him and hug him. When's the last time you've seen Pierre in a crowd with people wanting to touch him? You, you see him at a reception line shaking hands and, like, you know, patting well, someone on the D- back. Diego on Ditch Billy's trailer uh, mm-hmm. park convention but, in Nova Scotia. But when have you last seen him at an event with a lot of people where he wasn't on stage talking at them mm-hmm. and instead among them mingling? And not in a room where there's a mic but just out on the street, as we can see here, Mr. Chrisley. Come on over and just say hello to the street. Hello, everyone. Great to see you. Enjoy the acts today. Thank you very much. So, if you are noticing kids and cubs while you're watching this, there is a glaring difference mm-hmm. between yeah, that which right? the liberals are putting out and that which the conservatives are putting out. The conservative message is that there is absolutely nothing good about Canada, nothing to like, nothing to be proud of, nothing to enjoy, except for all the stuff that was in Pierre's fever dream that they pulled. Mm-hmm. Because it's not real. It's not real. And then you have a guy that is showing up genuinely 
participating with Canadians in the things that they care about and bringing all of himself to it. Was it any surprise that all of a sudden there are tons of still images? They're all still images of Pierre in front of crowds outside. But he's not actually doing them. And it's almost like in the United States where everybody is saying, hey, where are the Democrats? Where are the Democrats? They're low energy while Trump does one event a week and then phones everything in to Fox News. Mm -hmm. Has phone conversation after phone conversation. This week he's getting out every single day of the DNC convention, however, because he needs to program. So this week he's not being lazy. This guy is not going out to the crowds to get his crowd footage. He's going to rallies and standing on the stage in front of a mic where they're over there and he's over there, where he's potentially having himself photoshopped into pictures. If the image is not moving, yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. Moving images with real people or it didn't happen. These stills, constant stills, that, that, that they're, they're suspect. They're suspect. Uh, again, I don't want to hop on that bandwagon because it's not been proven to me. But here's the thing. If he was at this event with this large crowd where he put his arm up, like, where's the newspaper article mm -hmm. that talks about, about being at that event to go along with it? Yeah, there's nothing. So because suspect. wouldn't the news article, like, you know, tens of thousands of adoring fans show up at, like, I mean, they would be all over that, right? If that actually happened, we would never hear the end of it from conservatives. But instead, he's going to Kirkland Lake to a curling arena that holds at most 200, if it's standing room only, about 120, mm -hmm. 140. And he's got 14,000 people from all around the world saying, hey, I just got back. Uh -huh. If you have to do that, and then... AI yourself and Photoshop yourself and need people from Australia who have no freaking clue who you are writing like you could be like the most, you're the most important person in the Anglosphere to be following. It's, it seems that somebody somewhere has come to the conclusion that you need a lot of help. Mm -hmm. Pierre is not inevitable. No. No way. It's weakness. Well. This is weakness. It's all it is. They are scared. And they're trying to distract uh, and make you look away again. They don't want you to talk about the terrible video, so they've released another thing where they uh, literally are freaking out about uh, the purchase of a new condo in New York City in Manhattan for the Canadian consulate. And you have to look yes. at this. So Larry Brock, Trudeau buys his friend a $9 million condo in a New York City while taxpayers struggle at home. Out of touch. Conservatives will get to the bottom of yet another example of liberal waste. Trudeau government spends $9 million in a luxury condo for New York Council General. And I responded with, uh-huh, nice attempt at gaslighting. Liar. Yep. Canada is selling its former Manhattan consulate general residence listed at over 13 million. The new $9 million condo on billionaire's row will save taxpayers millions and reduce maintenance costs. The old unit bought in 1961 needed updates and didn't meet new accessibility standards. Mm -hmm. And the one in 1961 had been renovated in 1982. Mm -hmm. and needed to be renovated again. So because, when the news yeah. of this happened, they all came up and they says, oh my God, I can't believe he's buying another condo for his rich buddy, lavish and all the guys. The new place is actually smaller yes, as well and more suited to what is needed. So basically they're selling the old property that needed to be renovated again mm -hmm. for, nine, for 13 billion. They yeah, put it on the market million. and they're buying another one that's better, that won't need renovations done for a while, this for nine, so resulting in a four. profit yeah. of four billion dollars plus future savings from not having to do repair. What exactly is wrong with this deal again? Once again, um, lying by omission, gaslighting, attempting to make you look away from the terrible video they just released over at another story, which is a nothing burger. And so, and, and they're going to do this 
all the way. They are going to push this all mm-hmm. the way because today, I believe it is, nearly, for my politics, nearly two months after unanimously approving a conservative-driven campaign to take a closer look at the government's decision to spend $9 million of taxpayers' money, sorry, million, I said billion, I think, earlier. Yeah, um, million, million, million. <laughs> we do not... Hey, if we had a, if if we were selling a nine billion dollar, if we had a nine billion dollar property in the first place to sell for thirteen, that would be way much bigger news than this is. Um, but yes, they want to have a closer look at the government's decision to quote spend nine million dollars of taxpayer money to relocate the official residence of Canada's current consul general in New York from a twelve bedroom five bed to a 12-room, five-bedroom apartment on Park Avenue to what the conservatives contend is a luxury... Con- Maybe it's luxury and swanky and lavish like the Holiday Inn in Sudbury. So uh, Trent, A luxury yeah. condo in the midtown enclave known as Billionaire's Row. Government mm-hmm. operations and estimates members are heading back to the committee to able to kick off two days of hearings tomorrow on the move. Two days of hearings on why it is that we dared sell a property for four million for four million dollars more than we're going to buy another one i'm sure it's going to be riveting well and then to complain about why are they spending so much money i'm like um do you, do you know why that did... a postage stamp in manhattan will cost you about a million bucks oh my god So, uh, according to the latest notice, a tree of senior public works and government services officials responsible for real estate and property services, as well as a representative from the Officer of the Controller General, are scheduled to appear at 11 a.m., where you can watch the Conservative Party of Canada literally take your tax dollars, take a lighter, (laughs) because when they called the meeting, they didn't expect, I guess, that the sale would have resulted in a Four million dollar profit, minus well, commissions. I would assume. So one of the, one, <laughs> I want to address Trent's These comment guys are here. So bad at this. Well, just... Trent's comment here. He says, "You or I will never get to stay in th- that place, but we paid for it." Y- you're right, Trent. Yeah. So I'll never get to stay in Stornoway either, but I'm paying for that right now. So it, it, this is the the business of government. It just this is how it works. I don't like it. But that's how it is. I'm never going to stop in an office of fisheries and oceans. Yeah. Doesn't mean we can't have it because I'm not going to use it. I mean, it's, it's um, what I'm trying to say is it it's not a good no, argument to make. It's not no. a good argument. Every serious nation has a diplomatic core. Mm. Every serious nation has residences abroad for members of their diplomatic core, either that they buy outright or that they rent or lease or But This is not, it's the cost. It's like playing poker, you know, and everybody has to like put in the chips to say that they're in. These are the chips that we have to say that we we want to play the game. This is the entry cost. It's as simple as that. Do do I like it? No, but I I accept it because that's how it is. And because it's part of the world, it's part of our diplomatic strategy. Mm. Oh, yes. It's like a country that does not have a diplomatic strategy doesn't have much going on. It's like... This whole concept of like, you know, so I don't get to use it or I'm not going to benefit from it or, or I'm not going to personally benefit from it like in a manner, you know, that brings me joy or something is not the standard. Mm-hmm. The standard is what does it take to be a player in the game? Because you can't go back and then say, oh my God, nobody respects us, but you don't want a residence. You, you, you don't want a console general if you're a G7 nation. In New York City, the uh, uh, business in this world. If if you don't want to be in New York City, then you can't also complain that your country is nowhere mm-hmm. on the global economy. It's your freaking city. Yeah, and 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 remember, folks. Remember, folks. We just saved money and turned a profit of four million. What did this guy say back in May of 2024? Yeah. Pierre Polyev, my future government will do exactly the opposite of Trudeau on almost every issue. And we know that they have because remember when we had those GM shares Mm -hmm. that they could have held on to for as long as they wanted until it generated a profit. Like for example, if they sold them right now, that kept them all this time because like the TSX is a near record highs. 
that would have been a good thing. Somebody would be looking back and says, you know all that money, those billions that, that we put during that thing that happened that caused everybody to panic in order to save our auto industry and you said, ah, oh, like this? Well, you know what? It's X number of years later and those shares, we sold them at three times the price. That's the luxury about being a federal government. You have a way longer runway for credit and stuff like that. You can buy and hold something for a long time until it actually does come through an entire dip. Then, but what did they did? What did they do? They needed to ballot, create the illusion of a ballot budget once going into an election. They knew they were going to lose. Mm -hmm. And they sold off a public good at a loss. So if we're talking about he wants to do the exact opposite of what Trudeau is doing, if we're using this as an example, well, yeah, well, because and believe them, because they've done it. <laughs> Past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. Yes. If they are a billion or two short from balancing the budget and they need to balance that budget to get a two-day story or to win that current nanosecond, it's like, find us something we can sell. Mm -hmm. We don't care what the long-term cost is. We don't care if we are cutting off our foot in order to save a nose. Do it. Find something, sell it. It's not our stuff anyway. They won't notice. They're stupid. We'll get them talking about trans kids. They won't know. Yeah, and we just scooped up them. another $8 billion out from under them. They're dumb. That's what they're treating us like. They are treating you like you are stupid. They are insulting your intelligence. They are laughing in your face. They are mocking you. And they're extending them. They'd like say, give me your data and open up your wallet and pay, donate to me for the privilege. Because I'm pretty sure that when Pierre is a everyday common man, Pierre is uh, sitting in one of those mansions, <clears throat> one of the 10 luxurious mansions mm -hmm. that we showed you in the breach, talking to those people who are also at events that you will never be invited to attend. Well, I remember he, he visited the wealthiest neighborhood in Canada where the average income is $839,000, I think. Yeah. Yes. I bet you when they're talking about you, they're not and, saying the nicest things and they're having a good laugh over some very expensive champagne. And I, 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 I can guarantee you that, that the, the PM has probably been to those same mansions. Absolutely. In the same neighborhoods. I guarantee it. It's how it's done. It's how it's always been done. The wealthy and powerful donate money to get your party to a campaign level where you can run for office. This is... I mean, I'm not, like, when we point the finger of blame at Polyev, we're not saying that Trudeau isn't doing it, too. We're pointing the finger of blame at Polyev because he's trying to act like an everyman. Meanwhile, here's what he's doing. He's trying to act like the common man, the common people. He's only ever been a politician, and a pretty terrible one at that. Mm -hmm. 20 years and nothing to show for it. Yeah. Ah, the thing I was going to mention earlier that popped out of my head just popped back in. What's that? That thing with the conservatives and the video. Mm -hmm. Had the conservatives removed the video and Sarah Fisher was competent at her job, <laughs> and when they removed the video said, everyone, we published this video, we realized this, this, we're sorry, we decided to pull it. We wouldn't be talking, well, we'd be talking about it in the sense that they pulled it like this, but yeah, that's what you do. But they pulled it and then said nothing. Mm -hmm. Like none of us would notice, considering how terrible it was being ratioed. What was the likelihood of that possibility happen? And then they were asked about it. Mistakes happen. Try out. Now, this, if you're gonna pull something that you know everyone's seen mm -hmm. because you're pulling it because it's being ratioed, you gotta say something. I say, I do not understand how it is that the Director of Communications of the Conservative Party of Canada, nor its spokesperson, nor its leader, still haven't caught on to the fact that the internet is forever, especially since they keep on going back to the internet way back 
to find stuff that Judo did 20 something years ago. <laughs> totally mechanical. Say, like, you know, the internet is forever for the other guy. Yeah. They're so bad at this. They really are. They're, they're really bad at this. Maybe if we pull it and say nothing and don't move. Nobody will notice. Maybe if somebody comes and knocks at our door and we're standing in the window, but we don't duck before they arrive and we just don't move, maybe they won't notice we're here. Do they think they're Drax? I can stand so still you can't even see me. Remember from Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> they're so bad at this. <laughs> I... In the communication shop in which I worked, the one that I was a manager, well, either as an employee or as a manager, people would have been fired for this. Or if not fired, called into a room for a very, very long, detailed meeting. This is... <laughs> I got one for you that you're going to love. I'm, so, I'm sorry. It's just when I see people do the work that I used to do, and there's, I've said, there's like, uh, how come at 26 nobody made me run a shop? Because these people are t way older than I was when I was mm -hmm. doing that mm -hmm. job. Yeah. And I have way more experience than I did. And they're really bad at it. Oh, my God. How did you ascend to that position? Um, good question. Uh, you have something. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm giggling to it, so you got to take it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a, at Canadian Fryman on the Twitter put up. <laughs> when you order your Boss Hog from Wish, and for those of you listening, it's a side-by-side -side of Boss Hog from the Dukes of Hazard and Pierre Polyev. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought you'd really like that. I, I couldn't stop laughing the moment I saw it. I'm like, oh, I got to share that with you because that's a, that's too good. That's too good to let go, you know. Oh my god! Oh, by the way, I need to give a shout out to um, our sponsor Tita from the Pepper Master, mm. who uh, asked me yesterday, "Is it bad that I love to watch you guys on on two x speed when I'm watching your show?" I'm going, no, but you'd have to like tell me why. And apparently. When we watch us on 2X, um, both of us are sort of like animated at higher speed and we're really funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, hey kids, uh, if you want to try it every now and then and see if it... So here, here. <laughs> Oh man, okay. <laughs> oh man, all right. So what else have we got for you today? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to touch about it, talk about it a little, just a tiny bit, because I didn't get to watch too much. But of course, uh, the Democratic National Convention started yesterday. Just before we go there, I got something okay. that just came across my timeline Please that do. I think you'll Please find do. interesting. This sort of backs up what we've been That's talking the one. about. At one yep. plus one ten on Twitter, I have been a professional Photoshop artist for over 30 years. The image of PM Trudeau on the left is authentic and there's video to back it up. The image of Polyev on the right is fake, just like Pierre Polyev. He says, and I mean really bad Photoshop. Ooh. <laughs> so if we keep scrolling down, we've got, that's, he has no qualms about lying yeah. and posting fake photos. That's uh, the four one I was showing. Yeah, that, that's that they look like AI, to be honest with you. Yes. And then 29 years for me, and yes, he's a fake. It's not even good Photoshop. So again, I am not a Photoshop expert. But when somebody's been doing it for 29 and 30 years, they're saying, it's fake, man. You got to start to question. You got to start to question. Oh, Is he actually doing that? Would, would it surprise me to find out he's doing it? No, not at all. Not at all. Everything about the man is phony and fake. Anything that will pump up his, his narcissistic, self-centered, ego-driven pursuit of power. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. It's, I got to get a coffee. It's sad. <laughs> it's just pathetic. I'll be right back. All right. So, mm, this one's going to be pretty brief because um, I did watch some of the DNC uh, convention last night. Um, but... Um, I got to about, I got to the point after, um, uh, Hillary Clinton had spoke and I was, 
falling asleep. So I, I decided to go to bed to make sure that I was fresh uh, to do the show for you. So I didn't get to um, uh, President Biden's uh, passing of the torch yet. So I can't speak to that. Um, but the thing that uh, caught my eye, and I'm sure it caught the eye of a lot of people on um, the web, is the way that the Harris and Walsh team are trolling those who are trying to troll them. Now, if you've been paying attention, apparently there's something going on involving Doritos. Not quite sure exactly what it is, but uh, apparently Kamala Harris admitted at some point to eating Doritos. And Elizabeth Hasselbeck, who who I, I, I thought had vanished completely from the public sphere after she kind of vanished from the view, but apparently it seems that she did some survivor stuff and then... Um, got on to Fox again. Um, apparently she's very, very upset that they're eating Doritos. So the very next day, there's there something wrong about a woman of a certain age, I guess, eating Doritos. And I'm so there on the very next day, uh, there's video of her uh, with Tim Walls in sort of like a corner store. And she's asking like, you know, is there any corn nuts? And then he grabs a bag of Doritos and he uh, hands it to her and just go, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just <laughs> so and then if you remember with Barack Obama there was one day he decided to wear a tan colored suit and they lost it over that and they lost their minds well yesterday <laughs> um on the opening day the person who will probably be the nominee comes on stage like Trump did the first day and Trump didn't wear anything, uh, didn't, didn't wear anything, sorry, didn't really say anything. That's the day that news that J.D. Vance was his vice presidential pick was sent electronically through social media and everybody picked it up and whatnot. Right. Because, well, Kamala Harris did show up to say a few words, Mr. Grizzly. And um, we don't need the, the audio, so I'm just going to show this. And uh, please tell those who are listening at home and don't have the visual what Kamala is wearing. A tan jacket with a cream-colored shirt. Yes, she came out in a tan suit. <laughs> she's, she's lying. She's having a ball. Yeah. <laughs> she's trolling them. Literally, she's, she's wearing a tan suit. trolling them. I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. And this, and so did Hil Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Hillary, like this, not a tan suit because she's not as tan, but flesh yeah. colored. <laughs> so well, white fine. person, flesh colored, if you want, cream colored. I cream know. colored. <laughs> the equivalent of a tan suit for a white lady. <laughs> Let's yeah. put it this way. Oh my God. <laughs> Could this be any better? Um, they had, uh, there's a couple of speeches that I did listen to because they've got Jasmine Crockett later, which I do want to hear um, because she's great. Uh, but they had the coach actually of, um, I think, one of the U.S. basketball teams that won gold who came out. Yes. And normally, you know, I don't recognize them or not. I, I sort of skip, but I listened to his. Kind of good, actually. Mm. He had a whole section of what leadership is. Um, Coach kind of knocked it out of the park on that one. Not the most, you can tell he's not a politician because he didn't have the as polished a delivery. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about what leadership is. And, um, he said, if I can uh, find it and isolate it at one point, I would like to, to play that at some point because this is the type of discourse and we need somebody saying that up here as well. Um, but Hillary Clinton came on then. Okay, one, the amount of love that she got. And the amount of love that she got. Like mm -hmm. this, you could hear the crowd like cheering, like this one was going down and then a wave and then going down and then a wave and going down before she could even begin to speak. And um, she still got it. That was a speech. 
It wasn't a long 15, 20 minute one. Like this was short, it was punchy. So the point, but that was a speech. Because if you have an opportunity, I do not know what Joe Biden said or whatnot, like, but if you have time to look at one today, take like six or seven minutes like this, check the one from the coach and check the one from Hillary Clinton. Because um, hmm. now she did focus on the history being made. And I think that maybe that doesn't want to be like the main focus. It's like, you know, yes, Kamala Harris is female. Yes, she is biracial. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be making history, but they don't seem to be focused on that. Hillary Clinton, when she was leading her campaign, it really was a lot. Was the, the glass ceiling really was a big theme. And there was a lot of people that were saying, well, yes, but not that woman. Right? But she turned around and she was talking about Shirley Chisholm, who is the first person, first woman in the United States to run for president. Shirley Chisholm was black, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, she made a crack in that ceiling. And then Geraldine, Fer Geraldine Ferraro. Yes. As vice president, she made another crack. And then she says, then it was my turn in 2016. And I made another crack. This. But today, right now, now's that moment. We can all feel it. We can all feel it. And on the other side of that glass ceiling is Kamala Harris. Great visual. Oh, yes. Great speech. Great way to put it. Because the whole making history part, though, however, in this particular election, yes, if Kamala Harris becomes the president of the United States, be the first female, the first biracial, well, no, not first, second biracial, um, but, you know, biracial being the, with the second uh, part of it being from the Asian community, mm -hmm. which will be new. But the real history, the real history that will be being made simultaneously, the one that people have to focus on, is that someone who's running president for the third time, who has 34 felony convictions, not yet sentenced, but 34 felony convictions, and probably more to come, because if he loses, then he is going to be delivered to the oh, justice yes. system, and he's going to have to try to find a way to delay it for another four years to keep his orange butt out of jail. If he intends to run again in four years, if the guy lives that long and only the good die young, so count on him living that long. <laughs> <laughs> it is taking the wooden stake and the whole garlic plant and every basin of holy water in the damn country. Oh, goodness, yes putting the steak through the heart of Trumpism, rubbing it in garlic and drowning it in those basins of holy water. That's going to be the history that is going to be made. And then hopefully, con not only conviction, but sentencing and actual jail mm -hmm. for a former president of the United States broke the law every frickin' which way he possibly could conceive of. Because he has no regard Allegedly. for the law or anything for that matter. If it doesn't, look, it, when it comes to Trump, he will do anything to get ahead, do anything that brings him satisfaction, because I don't think he has any joy in his life. That's my personal opinion. I could be wrong, but it certainly seems like he, he's joyless. But he will do anything to win, and his version of winning is bizarre. Yep. And, if he, and if he commits a crime to do it, he doesn't care. I mean, he said, he actually said, I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and they would still elect me president. And he uh, almost proved us all right. 34 it's, felony convictions and more to come. Say not proved us all. He, nor, nor, he almost proved to that right. And yes. back on the Doritos thing, again, once again, if there's anybody, anybody who should be mocked at for anything Doritos related or Cheetos related, for that example, again, it's orange dust Mussolini. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. It's just like, I mean, here's the thing. It was like, what happens 
and I'm sorry, this might be going a little too far off the edge here, but what happens if they're that upset about her eating Doritos? What happens when she goes to one of those Midwestern state fairs and starts eating a corn dog? Because we all know how the Republican machine loves to talk about women. Oh, boy. Are they going to bring that Haktua guy back on again? To comment about her eating a corn dog? She's not very smart. She's, not a, she's a whore. She stepped her way to the top. She suddenly turned black. Really? This is what you've got? Really? Really? No, this. And you expect women are going to hear that? They're going to be turned on by that? Well, except women who are self-loathing. And you think that parents are going to want their daughters mm. to hear that? Y'all got upset at the Olympics because there were drag queens on a runway at a, at a tableau that you imagined yourself to be at the Last Supper when it was the Feast of the Gods. Yes. Because, oh my God, the kids are so corrupt. But you stand in front of, they sit in front of that TV and you laugh your motherfucking ass off when they call her the original Hawk to a girl. Mm -hmm. That same daughter you didn't want to watch, want to watch those Olympic opening ceremonies because there were people in drag is the daughter that you're sitting next to on the couch laughing your ass off. All they, really? Yeah. Really? You don't think they notice? Can't really? Notice everything. Come on, people. One of my favorite hey, Instagram, one of my favorite Instagram uh, stories, if you will, was um, in in a restaurant. Family's in a restaurant, and the waiter comes over and says, "Can I get you anything?" And the four year old says, "My mom really needs a fucking margarita." <laughs> <laughs> to which the mother responded, "They're always listening." <laughs> <laughs> the four year old said that to the server. Sorry for the swear, but it was necessary for the story. They are always listening. Always. <laughs> kids aren't stupid. They pick up on everything. If you remember what it was like to be a kid, I'm sure you remember things like that. I do. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it so much. Oh, that's, that, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good moment, actually. I think so. I just sent you something in the... In the um, uh, DMs and Twitter there if you wanted to have a look oh. at it. I don't know if you want to address it or not. Okie dokie. I will take a look at it. Uh, why don't you uh, take the next subject, Mr. Grizzly? I'll take a look at that. Uh, sure thing. I've, this one is, is kind of, uh, well, not really a big surprise, but I'm going to show you the headline and then I'll read some of the story to you because the article is from the National Observer. Oil Insider hired to help shape Alberta's climate policy. <laughs> I'm like... The, the fox isn't in the hen house. The, the fox is owning the damn hen house in this case. <sighs> a career oil and gas insider will soon be shaping climate policy in Alberta's Department of, of Environment and Protected Areas. After a decade working in various roles for the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, or CAP, C-A-P-P, Patrick McDonald has been hired by Alberta, in Alberta Environment and Protected Areas to serve as Assistant Deputy Minister of Air, Climate and Clean Technology. CAP is one of Canada's biggest and most aggressive fossil fuel lobby groups. It held 91 meetings with government officials in 2023, second only to Pathways Alliance, with 104, according to a recent report by Environmental Defense. CAP's member companies are responsible for nearly three quarters of Canada's annual oil and natural gas production. You've got an industry personnel embedded at the center of the decision-making structure on climate change. And what we really need is somebody embedded at the center of decision-making structure who's looking out for the best interests of all Albertans, not just the oil and gas companies said Stephen Legault, Senior Manager of Alberta Energy Transition at Environmental Defense. Civil servants, Legault said, are meant to be in a position to question their political masters, pushing back against bad decisions and grounding policy in factual, practical reality. 
McDonald got a start as an ex executive advisor with the Alberta Energy Regulator in 2009. He moved to CAP in August 2014 and spent 10 years there as a manager of oil sands and then as director of climate change and innovation before becoming assistant vice president of sustainability this March. Less than six months later, he made the jump from oil lobbyists to the senior ranks of government. The role of an assistant deputy minister is pretty damn important, according to Legault. He described the position as the front line of the government decision-making body whose job is to ensure departments are implementing government policy. If you put somebody from CAP in this position, they're not going to question the government's anti-climate change policy. They're going to reinforce it, he said. Alberta, Alberta Premier Daniel Smith has been waging war against federal policies that aim to decarbonize Canada's electricity grid and limit the amount of greenhouse gas emissions companies can generate while producing oil and gas, to name just two. Fossil fuel lobby groups, including, including CAP, have tried to kill or weaken these policies. Legault says industry groups already call the shots in Alberta's climate policy and hiring. McDonald merely removes some of the sense of separation between fossil fuel interests and government. <sighs> Alberta, you really got a clean house because your premier has no interest for you, for the environment, for the people that lived in Alberta. She cares only about her oil baron oligarchs. I'm going to put a link to the story in the chat here for those who want to read it in full. This is just, this is not good. Mm. <laughs> now, now, I'm going to... I'm going to be impartial here and give uh, this individual the benefit of the doubt, and maybe they maybe they will do a good job. It's not fair of me to automatically label them as as a mouthpiece for CAP, even though that's what they were for a long time. But maybe they will do an impartial job. I don't know. But it it, it kind of kind of stinks to high heaven. Yep. It, it's yep. the fox is in the hen house. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's like it's like oh Jenny Byrne being a lobbyist for Loblaws. Well, oh. <laughs> Oops, did I did I say something there that upset somebody somewhere? <laughs> oh, Mister Grizzly, being cheeky. <laughs> oh, you know, such a cheeky little bear. Uh, <laughs> um, speaking of energy. <clears throat> Um, the um, person who, unfortunately, we have to refer to as the Premier of Ontario seems to have done a major flip-flop. Yeah. Again. Uh, and yeah. this time, it's on uh, wind and solar power. According to uh, Mike Crawley, who's a really good journalist uh, covering Queen's Park, new Premier Doug Ford's big shift on wind and solar power his government scrapped hundreds of green energy projects shortly after taking office, but is now poised to launch Ontario's biggest expansion of renewable power in nearly a decade. Um, so it seems that Doug Ford has, some people are saying, like, has found a Jesus on mm -hmm. power. Now, again, as I said on the Laura Babcock show, Doug Ford sees every resident of the city, province as a profit center, not as a person. Yeah, well, I mean, what's the, the new slogan for the province of Ontario? Ontario, open for business. Yes. Literally, it says it when you cross from Quebec into Ontario. I just pointed it out to my folks when we drove back from New Brunswick the other day. My mother was like, oh my God. I'm like, that's Doug Ford. Not keep it beautiful, not yours to discover, open for business. Because apparently prior to Doug Ford, we didn't do any type of business in Ontario. Right. Right. So this uh, Ford guy, I have a th hypothesis that Doug Ford was never against EV stuff or wind power way back then. What he was against was the fact that they weren't his project, so he couldn't cut his buddies in. This is what I'm thinking, yes. Yeah. So he came in, and one of the first things he did when he came in was to go and attack the wind generation. He canceled contracts worth a lot of money. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of money. According to Mike Crawley, one of Doug Ford's first acts as Premier of Ontario just days after taking office in 2018 was cancelling more than 750 renewable energy projects, including a large wind farm that was already partially built. If I remember correctly, but don't quote me on this, he did not run on that. I may be wrong, but I don't... I think I would have remembered him saying, you know, I'm going to rip up those wind farms and yeah. run on that. I, yeah, I don't have any recollection of that. But I could be wrong. Fast forward to today, and Ford's progressive conservative government is poised to oversee the biggest expansion of green energy that the province has seen in nearly a decade. Ontario has laid out plans to procure an additional 5,000 megawatts of renewable energy by 2034. By comparison, the capacity of all wind power projects currently installed across the province totals about 4,900 megawatts. So he's going to a slightly more than double what exists currently. The move marks one of the most dramatic policy shifts, policy shifts from a government that has had its fair share of U-turns. There's a reason we call him Flip Flop Ford. Mm -hmm. well, there's a reason we called him Flip Flop Ford before we started calling him Premier Porky Pig when we found out just how bad the green belt thing was. Ah, mm. uh, yeah. Yes, he is the pig of pork. The expansion is driven by the anticipated rise in demand for electricity in Ontario, as well as the demand from many companies that the electricity supply be as emissions-free as possible. While wow, the industry is demanding it. You know why? Because it costs them less to produce something. Mm -hmm. Yes, the upfront capital costs are substantial, but... But the plan is almost certain to face some opposition, particularly when it comes to wind power. The government has promised to greenlight projects only with the approval from local councils, and more than 150 municipalities have passed resolutions saying no to wind farms. Of course, for the last couple of years, there have been a whole bunch of people saying, oh my God, they're the worst thing ever that you could possibly do. CBC News requested an interview with Stephen Lecce, recently appointed by Ford to be Ontario's Minister of Energy and Electrification, but for some reason, on such a big announcement, he was unavailable. Yeah. So this seems like um, Doug Ford is giving business what it is that they want because they know where the buck is going. Yes. And they don't want the province to sabotage them because there is going to come a day that if your projects that you make have a carbon footprint that are large that is larger than a certain standard you will not be able to export them to nations who have that standard which reduces the number of export markets that you have which reduces the amount of price the price you can get for your product which nobody in business likes to be forced to get a lower price that's the whole reason we built tmx right we're tired of getting a lower price for our oil because we had to send it to somebody else to do something to it first. And then it could be exported. Keith Brooks, Program Director with the Advocacy Envir Group Environmental Defense, says the Ford government's apparent change of heart on renewable energy is good news, and it is. But again, is he doing the right thing mm -hmm. for the wrong reason? Which is, as we mentioned, the greatest reason. The fact that the government has now had this about face on wind power and solar power speaks to how amazing this technology is, how fast it's growing in other parts of the world, and how much costs have come down, Brooks said in an interview. Around the world, in China, in Minnesota, in California, in the Netherlands, renewable power is experiencing a great boom. For Ontario to be sitting on the sidelines would be a real shame. Now, we could have been six years further ahead. Yes. Yeah. The first step in Ontario's green energy expansion plan is to take place this year with a call for proposals for 2,000 megawatts of power, roughly equivalent to the output from Ontario's proposed refurbishment of the Pickering nuclear, nuclear plant. The current timeline calls for that first phase of projects to come on stream by 2030, with another 1,500 megawatts to follow by 2032, and a further 1,500 megawatts by 2034. While the province is not specifying in advance any breakdown of how much this power will come from wind versus other forms of renewable energy, such as solar or biomass, industry officials say that they expect wind to account for the bulk of it. Wind power supplied about 9% of Ontario's electricity in 2023, nearly four times as much as solar. That's arguably no better place. There's no sorry. There's arguably no better place to assess Ontario's experience with wind energy than Melanchthon Township, about 100 kilometers northwest of Toronto. The rural community in Dufferin County is home to about 3,200 people and 167 wind turbines. It's also the site of the first large-scale wind farm to be built in Ontario, operating since 2006. 
Mayor Darren White says many of the fears that were raised in the early 2000s about the impact of wind farms on people's lives never came to pass. However, White says the way the previous Liberal government approached wind power in Ontario, approving projects regardless of local councils willing, this was unfair. So, both right. The fears that the projects were going to, of what it was going to bring, never materialized. Really? You don't say? You mean the whole industry that exists solely to make us afraid of change because somebody has a vested interest in keeping the status quo said stuff that wasn't true? What a shocker. Stop the presses. But if the then liberal government, at the time that these things were starting, turned around and says, you're getting one whether you want one or not, at a time where the technology was newer and all these projects couldn't be built at the same time on the same place, why? Why not start with the places that wanted it? Mm-hmm. And then they allow the other people to see what happened. So trying to impose it on people, especially at an initial phase, probably not the smartest idea. You go with those who want to, and then you see who else then jumps on the bandwagon. Melanchthon's <clears throat> council is currently on record as unwilling to host any more wind projects. White says that could change if a company comes forward with a proposal that would be good for the community. We're not going to pass a resolution just on the back of a napkin drawing, said White. We want to see your plan. We want to see the locations. We want to see what the infrastructure is. We want to see what the benefits to the community are going to be. So don't come and ask me for a resolution before you've done your homework, which is common sense. Mm -hmm. The requirement for companies to get municipal approval is just one key difference between the PC and liberal government's approaches to wind power. I think that that is an actual good change. There we go. We've just said something positive about the Ford government. There's also a notable financial difference. Under the Liberal Since Repealed Green Energy Act, the province issued contracts paying wind and solar producers lucrative premiums for generating electricity, justified at the time as a way to kick a start a nascent industry. This time around, the bidding process is to be competitive, with the province looking to see how cheaply the power can be produced. Now, Lecce's press secretary makes a comment that while it is true, it is placed in a context or in a frame to say they did this terribly and we're going to do this so much smarter mm -hmm. which of course not exactly fair because at the time as the article says it was a industry that was just coming into being so therefore you were providing additional incentives if the kathleen wynn liberals were doing this today i'm not sure that they would be putting in an extra incentive at this point, because number one, the technology is proven. Two, mm. and it's widespread that the cost of setting it up now is really dropped. Is yeah, really dropped. So that's the context in which this quote should be heard. Quote: While the liberals paid up to eight times the going rate for wind projects that were imposed on unwilling communities, we are determined never to force families and seniors into energy poverty again. Our priority is to deliver affordable energy rates for families while expanding reliable energy to power homes and businesses across the province, said the spokesperson. Now, although the nitty-gritty specifics of the bidding process are yet to be revealed, plenty of companies are potentially interested, according to Leonard Kula, vice president of the Canadian Renewable Energy Association. Quote, over the last decade or so, the cost of wind and solar have come down significantly in Canada and around the world. He says companies are already having conversations with municipalities about what their projects could like look like and says Ontario's nearly two decades of experience with wind power has boosted people's familiarity with the industry. So basically the conservative spokesperson is making this comment that like 20 years later, liberals would still be doing business as they did 20 years ago and wouldn't have adapted to adapt to any type of change that has happened since then, which is dumb. Wind power companies in Ontario typically pay annual rent to the owners of properties where each turbine is located and also negotiated, negotiate what are called community benefit agreements. For instance, Millington gets about $600,000 a year for its agreements with wind power producers accounting for roughly 10% of the town's annual operating budget. Mm. Seems like win, win, and win. Certainly. Jane Wilson, yeah. Jane Wilson, president of Wind Concerns Ontario, a volunteer-led advocacy, advocacy group, says she was surprised by the Ford government shift in direction. "Quote: We'd like to see more of the existing problems addressed and resolved before we go forward and contract with more wind power sites," she said in an interview. However, Wilson says the government's commitment not to impose projects on unwilling communities marks a quote big difference from how things proceeded under the McGuinty Liberals, and it does 
and it's a good one to change. Rooks of Environmental Defense says evidence from around the world shows that wind power is safe. Quote, I think it's a problem that some people are trying to stoke those fears again or rekindle that opposition. These projects are good and communities should embrace them. The Ford government spent $231 million to cancel the green energy contracts at Torp after taking office, but said the move would save ratepayers some $790 million by not paying for power the province didn't need. And while we may not have needed it six years ago, surely if that Ford wanted to grow the province, would have known that at some point we would need the energy. And there are two types of people in the world, kits and cups. There are people that say, hey, why would I buy a colored TV now? There are only black and white TV shows. Mm-hmm. I will wait till the black, till the colored TV shows exist, and then I will buy a colored TV. Sounds sensible. And then there are the people that says, you know what? I know that color TV shows are coming and I want to be the first to see them. So I'm buying my color TV now, even though I can only watch black and white on them right now. The difference, of course, being the government is investing in the future for everybody in the province because they have the ability in the bank account to do it. I want to share a picture with you, Sean. I got one last. Oh, oh sorry, no, this okay. is related. Yep, go ahead. Yep. So if you look at this photo, and I'm just going to, it's, it's not the greatest photo in the world. Yep. If you look, what's that? So this is downtown Ottawa in the foreground yep. here. It's downtown Ottawa. And it's shot from the Gatineau's in, in the hills. And look at the background there. What are those? Way out in the horizon. It looks like a wind farm. A big wind farm just south of Ottawa. And you, sir, as you very well know. On Wolf uh, Island. Wolf Island. It's, there's got to be 50 of them. Probably, yeah. It's not more. And if you've ever never stood next to one, they're huge. And they're also quite quiet. Yes. Because when you go, when you, at the entrance to Big Sandy Bay Beach on Wolf Island, it's, it's about a 2K walk-in, you park your car, and there's a windmill right next to it. And I yep. remember standing there, and my buddy goes, wow, that's really quiet. And I'm like, what? And I turned around, and I looked up, and it was spinning. Couldn't hear a damn thing. Couldn't hear a thing. I was like, oh, shit. I had no idea. When that was one of the fears, though, the roar of the turbines mm-hmm. will keep you up at night. And this. Now, the last paragraph of this article by Mike Crowley um, contains a little fact, Ed, that maybe a lot of people don't know. Oh. The government of Ontario currently spends about $6 billion of taxpayer money each year to subsidize Ontario's electricity rates. Yes, that's because I see a, I just got my hydro bill the other day and it shows a savings rate of I don't know, $25 in rebates from the province. Mm-hmm. About half of the province's electricity supply is generated by nuclear plants, roughly one quarter by hydro dams and the rest by a mix of gas plants, wind and solar. So there, your, uh, the bill that you're paying is not actually the full cost of it because the government has decided that it is diverting $6 billion of your tax money to create the impression that they are offering you low energy rates. They're, they're, they're not. <laughs> we, we, we do need to uh, invest more money into nuclear power because mm-hmm. it is, other than the nuclear waste from it, it's actually the most efficient uh, generation of power there is with, ironically, the least amount of waste. We're still afraid of it, and we still haven't mastered it, and we probably won't, and maybe someday cold fusion will be a real thing. But they're building smaller and smaller reactors that can generate more and more energy. You know that there's a nuclear reactor in the city of Ottawa, eh? At Tunney's Pasture. Yes, that's true. It's, It's no longer active, but it's right there on the edge of the river. There's what looks like a bunker. That was a nuclear reactor, and they used it to power Tunney's Pasture years ago. It was kind of done as an experiment. Uh, Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission set it up, and it was done, you know, how, how much gen, how much energy can we generate here? The water is very deep and cold right there in the Ottawa River. Same thing with, with um, uh, Deep River, mm-hmm. which is you know, ironically called Deep River. Uh, but the river is very, very deep there, which is just up, up the line, as they say, in the Ottawa Valley, where the nuclear power plant is. And it's not just a nuclear power plant. They do all kinds of research there as well. Yeah. And who, who saved us from having a complete meltdown back in the day? Former president, Jimmy Carter. There you go. 
Because yeah. he was a nuclear specialist. Now, <clears throat> to put the bow on the Doug Ford thing, yeah. let's have a, a, a little flashback to, oh, um, what's the date? November 21st, 2019. Because mm -hmm. there's an article by the Canadian press that appeared in the CBC. Doug Ford, proud of tearing up hundreds of green energy contracts. This is from 2019. Mm -hmm. Premier Doug Ford said Thursday he is, quote, proud of his decision to tear up hundreds of renewable energy deals, a move that his government acknowledges could cost taxpayers more than $230 million. Ford dismissed criticism that his progressive conservatives are wasting public money, telling a news conference that the cancellation of 750 contracts signed by the previous liberal government will save cash. I'm so proud of that, Ford said of his decision. I'm proud that we actually saved the taxpayers $790 million when we canceled those terrible, terrible, terrible wind turbines that really for the last 15 years have destroyed our energy life. Later Thursday, Ford went further in defending the canceled contract, saying, if we had the chance to get rid of all the windmills, we would. Wow, that's stupid. He's not a very bright individual, is he? I mean, he tore out how many rechargeable uh, stations that the province put in? Mm. Hence, my hypothesis that his real problem, the real reason, those windmills were terrible, terrible, terrible. His friends weren't making any money off of them. That's all it was. Because that's a wholesale change of values. Yes. In five years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's all in on EVs now. Mm. Waited till his friends invested mm -hmm. enough money that they could profit off of it. So now he's all in on EVs. Follow the money, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see here in the chat that our dear friend Mateo is currently going under anesthesia. Oh. So we'll send a good vibes yeah, to our friend and we'll send good vibes to the family. Hope that everything goes well and smoothly and that it is uneventful. Mm. And that Mateo returns back to his usual self in no time flat. There you go. Indeed. Um, some other news, uh, Mr. Grizzly, that we have. Well, should we, should we discuss this one? About oh, yes. The there's a thing that you, yes, there's a thing that you uh, sent me. Um, there's. Oh, that one too. Yeah. Did you want to discuss that? I don't know if you did or not. But I would bring this one <laughs> yeah, up from Michelle this. Ferrari. Yes. Yes. I'll read yes, this tweet that. to you because this is just absurd. So this is Michelle Ferrari from Peterborough. I met with Kawartha SAC yesterday. What they shared was shocking. Human trafficking is up 84% in Canada. So that's Canada. Since Justin Trudeau took office in Peterborough city alone, clients have nearly doubled in the last year. The most at risk age group is 13 to 14 year olds. The cost of living crisis has driven parents to traffic their own children. Human trafficking can happen to anyone. Okay. Let's unpack that, shall we? Go ahead. If that is the case, and she's aware that people are trafficking their own children, which I really doubt, she needs to report that and have it investigated immediately instead of trying to make political hay from it. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that she does have a history of making political hay out of other people's tragedies. Oh, yes. Right? We recently talked about how that uh, meeting of the women who had suffered at the hands of their partners, intimate partner violence, was organized as a total shit show which nobody behaved well on that committee and caused the people that had showed up, shown up to leave the room, some of them even mm -hmm. in tears. Yes. They're asking for a do-over, which we should have, hopefully okay. with different members of the Conservative Party of Canada on that committee, though. Mm. Uh, and maybe a couple of other ones should be switched out, too. I'm just saying. But yes, she should call the authorities if she's aware of that now if somebody challenged her on that mm -hmm. and said well you know the, i got this from the kcsa the um is it kcsa yeah quartha yeah quartha sac sexual um what does the sac stand for sorry quartha sexual assault clinic so michelle ferrari is saying that she met with people at the quartha sexual assault clinic 
said that human trafficking is up 84% Canada. So according to Statistics Canada, she posts no mm -hmm. link to that actual data supported. Of course not. She goes, in Peterborough City alone, clients have nearly doubled in the last year. Most at risk age group is 13 to 14 year olds. She makes the claim about the cost of living. Uh, she says, the Kings, uh, the Kawartha Sexual Assault Center has seen a massive increase in domestic violence uh, themselves. Uh, apparently, sexual assaults are up 75% in Canada. She doesn't say starting from when. Uh, the cost of living crisis is directly linked to these stats. Blah, blah, blah. Survivors are coming forward because the Liberal NDP soft on crime. Pelosi so blah, blah, blah. Right? Um, now, somebody's saying, well, she's basically saying, well, of course, she didn't have to report it to the police herself because, I mean, you know, the Kawartha Sexual Assault Center would have done that. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody decided, named Tanya, at Tanya Ran, Twitter, decided to uh, look into a little something. And this is what they came up with. Zero incidents of received material benefit from sexual services provided by person under the age of 18 years reported by police in Peterborough from 2015 to 2023. Zero trafficking in persons reported last year. So she just makes shit up. And Tanya posted the stuff from Statistics Canada mm -hmm. for the region of Peterborough. But Michelle Ferrari did not link to the Statistics Canada data. She just pulled them out of her arse. Michelle. Come on, man. Come on. And here's the other inconsistency. They received the report from Statistics Canada. They say that domestic internet intimate partner violence is up and we need to call an emergency meeting right 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 now in the middle of the summer even though the house is not sitting and we can't pass any legislation we got to right. do that now children are being trafficked by their own parents where's the emergency meeting michelle Yeah, the silence is uncomfortable for a reason. Yeah. It's just, just. Who does this? What type of person does this? If this is actually going on, this is terrible. I and mean, if you think that there's something for which you would call an emergency meeting, this it would be would children be being trafficked by their own parents. Mm-hmm. I would think so, uh, you know. 13 to 14 year old children primarily? She's concerned. She wrote a tweet about it. It's shocking. She's blaming the liberals. This all happened under Tristan Tour. But not enough. Not tragic or terrible enough to call, drop everything and call an emergency meeting. Consistency over time, consistency over subjects. Flood the zone with bullshit. I'm just. Uh, uh, now, there's another thing. That's the thing that you uh, sent me. Um, it yeah, seems. Did you, did you want to address that? I didn't know if you wanted to or I, not. I, I don't. See, you. here's the thing. It's like I. My comment on this is the same one that I seem to have all the time mm -hmm. uh, on this one. Let us have our day. Let us have our day. So Ottawa, there are organizations withdrawing from Ottawa Pride this year because um, Capital Pride uh, has issued a statement on August 6th expressing solidarity with Palestinians and occurring, accusing the liberal Israeli government 
for pinkwashing the ongoing Israel-Hamas war by criticizing its LGBTQ2S plus inclusivity in an effort to draw attention away from its actions in Gaza. The statement condemned in the strongest possible terms the Hamas terrorist attack on October 7th, 2023. It also pledged to recognize the ongoing genocide against Palestinians in opening remarks at the 2024 Capitol Pride Festival signature events, among other commitments. Uh, while some other organizations, such as Queers for Palestine, Ottawa, applauded Capital Pride for pledging to boycott Israel companies, the statement drew considerable backlash from Jewish residents and advocacy groups such as, such as B'nai B'rith Canada and the Jewish Federation of Ottawa. It didn't take long for some local organizations and leaders to announce they were pulling out of the Sunday's parade. Here are the organizations and leaders who have confirmed to CTV News that they will not be participating in Capital Pride events this year. Uh, this was as of uh, 6.48 p.m. yesterday. Mm -hmm. the Jewish Federation of Ottawa, the Liberal Party of Canada, the Ottawa Carleton District School Board, Ottawa Mayor Mark Sutcliffe, Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, the Ottawa Hospital, Montfort Hospital, the Conseil des Écoles Catholiques du Centre-Est, the University of Ottawa, the U.S. Embassy in Ottawa, the Public Service Pride Network. Wow. Other gay people, they know. The NDP still plans to attend. Hmm. Now, Unlike Toronto Pride, this isn't a group of protesters that came up and disrupted the parade while it was happening. No, no. This is people on the board of Capital Pride themselves mm -hmm. that have decided, again, in a year, or two years even, where trans kids are being targeted, mm -hmm. Daniel Smith in alberta just said that when she's coming back in september like this she's making it her first priority to do something legislatively this, that will negatively affect transgender children because she too needs to change the channel from a couple of things so she's throwing some red meat to the base she also has a leadership review coming Now, this one is coming from inside the house. This is also not the first time it's in my lifetime, a while ago, because there was an Ottawa the Capital Pride that almost got completely canceled because there was infighting among members of the community on this very issue. Again, I keep on saying, I understand mm -hmm. that people are taking a stand against what they think is genocide. Right. Yes. Which we would take a stand with as well. We do too. Genocide is always bad. wrong. It's bad. It's wrong. Don't do always it. Always wrong. All right. There are 365 calendar days on the year. We get one day. Mm -hmm. But there are people dying. There are people in our community who are dying too. Gay bashings, trans bashings, homophobic, they exist. All right? We get one day where it actually is about us and our thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not like our community doesn't show up for other people's things the other 364 days of the year. Even for people who don't show up for us, we still show up for them because mm -hmm. we know about discrimination and oppression and we don't like it for us and we don't think it should happen to anyone so we even stand up for those who do not stand up for us can we please please have one day yeah. that is ours can we have one day where we stop succumbing to demands that we put ourselves last one day and again i don't see this debate happening at the santa claus parade i don't see this debate happening at the saint patrick's parade i don't see this debate happening at caravana why is it always us easy target soft target i think uh, tell me if i'm wrong please please again Gays for Palestine. If you want to march in the parade, march in the parade. 
Mm -hmm. But don't ask that the entire event be about your thing. It's not about you. It never was about you. One day. One. Now, we have the situation here, the same situation that affected Mayor uh, Jyoti Gondek mm -hmm. in Calgary around Christmas and Hanukkah time, where she was going to attend a Hanukkah menorah lighting ceremony because we were celebrating Hanukkah. And then some people decided to add an extra political message. And then she said she couldn't participate. Why? Because she is the mayor and she's supposed to represent every single person in that city. It would be impossible for her to represent everyone when they went there and they added a political message. If Capital Pride had kept Capital Pride about pride and issues related to our community, these people could show up because that's a political message of inclusivity. Everybody should have a seat at the table. Nobody should lose their lives because of what they identify as their gender or who they love. But now it's, we have members of the gay community who are pro this that have nothing to do with the gay community or anti this that have nothing to do with the gay community and we're adding another additional political message which separates the people into an us and a them and these groups who are supposed to represent everyone say sorry i can't show up this is not a time at which our community needs fewer allies no kidding. There are people campaigning on interfering with our right to access to health care for some of our brothers and sisters. There are still people who would like to bring back conversion therapy. There are still people that would like to roll back the clock on same sex or equal marriage. There are still people who are completely unmoved when they learn that a trans person has been murdered brutally. Mm -hmm. or a gay kid has been kicked out of their home because they dared to be honest with their parents about who they were and their parents were not able to handle it or cope. Mm -hmm. The parents were not able to remember that the duty of a parent is to love your child unconditionally. You are not the child I needed you to be or expected you to be, so you got to leave. We need all the allies we can get. Too Just like people the people who are against genocide need all the allies they can get. Mm -hmm. We can work together. But if you ask us to show up for you and you cannot show up for us, if you ask us to be there 364 days of the year for you and you're not happy unless you get the 365th, but you can't be there for us for our one, I, and I understand that the context is, but it's genocide. There are people who want to wipe us out too. There are people out there who would rather we do not exist to that. We do not exist in public space if they can't eliminate us completely. Mm -hmm. He had that dim bulb, Tom Morazzo. Posting something. I just went to Nova Scotia and everybody was so nice, but the thing that I found off putting was all those rainbow flags everywhere. That's not reflective of the people. The UN came in and, you know, I don't know what, if he's suggesting at gunpoint or whatnot, but it's like, you you put those rainbow flags up like this for our global domination, whatever things, or else. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, again, kiss and cups. Let's play. What's more likely? that the UN came in and forced yeah. towns and municipalities all over across North America to fly those rainbow flags or else, or that the reason you found people in Nova Scotia are nice because they're nice to everyone. Yeah. They're just that's nice. What it is. They're just nice people, period. You go to the Maritimes, people are just nice. They were go nice to Newfoundland to you, and Labrador. People and are nice just to us. nice. What's more likely? 
It's like, and the fact that you need to invent yourself some fever dream scenario where there's this global international government that's coming in and threatening people to put up flags or else for you to be able to get through your day mm -hmm. because you can't stand the image of a rainbow. It sends you to your unhappy place. That's a you problem, buddy. Stop making your problem ours. Yeah. So it may sound selfish. It may sound, oh my God, I can't believe that you're willing to like just look past genocide so that you can have a day of celebration. It's not just a day of celebration. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of protest. It's a day of looking forward. But it's also a day of mourning our losses. Mm -hmm. Pride is all of that together. It's a day of recognizing that still, even in 2024, where some people, even in our own damn country, even in our own damn parliament, are concerned, me, right here, in front of a microphone, using my freedom of expression to talk to you about the fact that we are still being killed. Maybe not by a national government that's dropping bombs on us, but we are still being killed is an act of subversion. Every day that I am here, just being an openly out gay beaver, sharing elements of my life for you is an act of rebellion. It makes me a threat and a danger. And that I need to be eliminated. My voice needs to be silenced. I am not unsympathetic. I will use my platform 364 days a year. When I see genocide to say genocide is bad. Yeah. It's wrong. It needs to stop now. But can we have one? Where we can, we're allowed to say our people are dying too. Please stand up for us. I need to address this. Trent, you need to understand something here. Okay? A Canadian flag is representing a country and a nation of people. An American flag is representing a cushion, a country, a nation of people. You are allowed to burn the flag in protest. You have that charter protected right in Canada and in the United States. A pride flag does not represent a country or a nation. It represents, it represents a group of people who have been ostracized their entire lives, who have been trod upon and put down. And as Mr. Beaver just explained, many people want them not to exist. So if you burn a gay pride flag, hate crime straight to jail, that seems a little heavy. It's ended. never, never in the history of anywhere in North America has somebody burned a pride flag and gone straight to jail. Yeah. That is you not a thing. You will get called out. You will get called out because there are consequences for the actions of the speech you make. You are able to express yourself freely like that, but. And burning the flag. You're Mr. going Grizzly, too far there, sir. Mr. Grizzly makes a point that what you are burning, what you represent, the message you are sending, but it is not a hate crime to burn. No. Right. Now, if you are burning the gay, fly, gay pride flag while yelling death to all gays, it's That's the death crime. to all gays part that is a hate crime and the burning yes. of the flag goes to confirm that. But you are allowed to burn a gay flag. I would not recommend it. But you are allowed to use your freedom of expression. You're not. There's no special law that says if you burn the gay pride flag or if you burn the prisoner of war flag or if you burn the flag of an indigenous community, or if you burn the flag of Canadians living with multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. that you're going, no, there's no special provision. There's no special law that singles you out like this. Yes. But again, if you use your freedom of expression to do that, don't be surprised if other people use their freedom of expression to call you a dick. Because there are consequences for the action of your freedom of expression. It's like, but it is not a thing. It is not a thing. 
just like I saw another person post something on the uh, on Twitter today. You know, it's like, oh, if I said this, oh, because of C18, I'm going straight to jail. So I'm really scared to like this. Well, if you were truly, really, generally, really scared that you typing this and tweeting it would send you to jail, like really, mm-hmm. like you thought that you were living in Russia or Iran or whatnot, this this tweet of yours would not exist. Well, did you see? Sorry. You're not that scared if you're actually doing it. You mentioned Russia. Did you know that Putin has recently put out a call, he says, for those living in the West who feel they are oppressed by whatever crap. You can love, come and live freely in Russia. How did that oh, work yes. out for that family from BC of nine who moved yeah. to Russia? How did that yes. work out for them again? Yes, Russia is telling people all over the world, hey, if you're feeling oppressed in the United States and Canada, come over here. We'll love you. And as soon as you learn, you're going to be conscripted and sent to Ukraine. But hey, if you, again, it's a free country. The charter gives you a right to immigrate. And you have a constitutional right to make dumb decisions. Mm-hmm. Comrade Alexander Jones, if you would like to go, can we help you pack? I, I, I'll, huh? I'll give you a hand. I mean, if you, uh, it's like, and you got Alex Jones like promoting this. You know that he's not going to be on the first plane there. Oh, no. Everybody else go. It's like, here's the thing. If the people promoting this, here's a media literacy tip for you. If the people promoting this, you do not see them with bags packed and they're not over there and then tweeting out from over there saying, hey, come on in, the weather's fine. Mm-hmm. Don't sell your house. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, Jesus. Did you feel that? <laughs> that was Ronald Reagan spinning in his grave. <laughs> you just caused a tremor. Oh, man. So, I mean, like, we need to have a little perspective here, mm-hmm. right? If you are going, nobody says you're not allowed to have unpopular views. Nobody is allowed to say you're not allowed to express an unpopular view. For a lot of people, the view that I just expressed, for fuck's sakes, can we please let pride list be about pride? Mm-hmm. Damn it. Yeah. This is an unpopular view. Yes, it is. But don't you care about this? Don't you? Of course I do. I can care about more than one thing. The fact that I care more about us on one day than I care about other people on that day doesn't mean I don't care about other people. Over the course of a year, over the course of my life, I care. Right? I just want a moment that people care about us too. Yeah. Right. So, but it is a controversial position. I mean, there's division within the gay community right there. The Capitol mm-hmm. Pride has decided that they're going to make this event more about that than their actual thing. And there are groups from the community that have decided, sorry, if you're going to do that, we can't participate. Right. Our communities are not monoliths. But if you put something out into the universe, you have a constitutional right to do that. There are certain laws, because we have freedom of expression, not full freedom of speech. So there are certain constraints. And even in a country where you have freedom of speech rather than freedom of expression, there are still some constraints because there will always be rules. Yeah, There's always going to be a limit. There's always going to be an adult in the room. Always. But freedom to say it does not come with freedom of consequence for saying it, and it doesn't come with a guarantee of an audience Mm -hmm. or a platform with which to say it. That's it. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. It's not, it's not. And here's the other thing, right? For like the Tomorazos and all that. Keep on saying, like, you know, like, why do you have to like keep on putting your obsession in her? It's like you're the one who is going online 
and talking about your time in Nova Scotia, where you could have just said, had a lovely time in Nova Scotia. Everyone was really nice. Thank you. But I went to Nova Scotia. Everyone was nice. But my God, it was so off-putting to see all those written. You're the one that just stuck your nose in our business. <laughs> You're the one who just took your obsession with what's between our legs and what we do in the privacy of our own bedrooms and tried to make a big deal about it. Nobody cares about it like this. Well, you freaking care enough. You wrote a damn novel. He did? If you are saying, nobody cares about this, like this, and you're on Twitter spending time of your precious life mm -hmm. writing about how nobody cares like this, clearly you care. Because well, you invested a... precious moments from your life that you could have been spending with your family or doing something that you enjoy or freaking just eating ice cream. He has a As massive a... inflated sense of self because this is the guy who sat in front of a press conference saying, we'll sit down at the table with the other governments, just get rid of Trudeau and then we'll... If you... And then he tried to blame it that he was not feeling well that day. I'm like, sorry, Tom, we all saw you do it live. If you truly believe that nobody cares about the issue... Nobody cares about gay people. Then you can just walk on by unbothered and live your best life. Mm -hmm. You don't need, if nobody truly cared about it, why do you need to bring attention about it and crusade and rail about it? Nobody cares that it's happening. So you care a lot. And you're the one, once again, who's thinking about dick and gay sex more often than those of us. Like, new rule. All right? New rule. People who are allegedly Christian, allegedly heterosexual, allegedly patriots, allegedly truth, see truth seekers or truth speakers, you're not allowed to tweet about gay dick and transgender genitalia more often than we do. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of because get I I love myself some gay dick. <laughs> I do, and I understand that men think about sex once every seven seconds. I've got it down to bound once every thirty because I got you know incredible great control. Well, and you but get older, if you I thought if I was if I was as obsessed with gay dick as much as you are, I don't think gay dick is fantastic. <laughs> Mister Grizzly will never know the joy. He's hopelessly heterosexual, but I tell you, take my word for it, it's fantastic. No, not my, not my jam, I would sorry. never get this show done. Yeah. yeah. I would be, I would have my face down in gay dick 24-7. Barely come up for air. But I believe in being a well-rounded person. I have other things going on. It's a big world out there. There's lots to discover. All right? New rule. You can't think about gay dick more than I do. <laughs> and I love the shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. Calm the fuck down. CTF. <laughs> oh my God. You people, you keep on saying we're obsessed. We keep on shoving it down your throats, but you keep on showing up wherever we are. Yeah. Just live your well, lives. <laughs> like, like, here, here's the thing here, here's the thing i'm gonna i'm gonna address something else here too without calling it out directly but um for those people who feel i just i just want to be left alone nobody's bothering you i need you to understand that gay people have always been here trans people have always been here bisexual people have always been here Intersex people have always been here and will continue to be here. And what is intersex? It's a third gender for those of you who are not aware. It's somebody born with both sets of male and female genitalia. It's a real thing. You can look it up. Go ahead. Go ahead. You have my permission. I actually recommend you look it up so maybe you could learn something for those of you who don't know about this. Because I was having a conversation one day and my 77-year-old mother, 77, my mom, who's in her 70s, I'll get the date right, she just had her birthday a few weeks ago. We were having a conversation. Somebody said, well, there's only two genders. And my mother said, no, there's not. There's three. 
And I went, that's right, mom, there are three. My mom, who was in her 70s, knew this because she watched Oprah. And on Oprah, they had uh, an individual come out and discuss what intersex is. We used to use the term hermaphrodite. Somebody born with both male and female genitalia. How they present is a different story. Because some people present more female than male and vice versa. But it's something that's always been here. Gay people have always been here. Straight people have always been here. I saw a great video clip yesterday of a gentleman asking people if uh, being gay is a choice. And of course, 99% of them said, well, yes. He says, oh, okay, okay. When did you choose to be straight? And that's the reaction. Uh, well, uh, yeah. It's not a choice. You're born that way. Get used to it. And nobody is kind of trying to ram anything down your throat. They're just trying to exist in public life like I get to. I know. And that's like, it's like and you get these comments like, oh, well, it happened too fast. You need to give people time to, to get there. And it's like, other people do not have an obligation to exist in a manner that makes you comfortable. People that have been oppressed for thousands of years do not need to wait an extra 15 years for you to be ready. They're just trying You've to had it good for 2,000 years. You need to cope. You need to cope. Simple as that. It's a big world. There's it takes all kinds to make a world. Every one of us, by virtue of the fact that we are human beings, share the same planet and breathe the same air, are entitled to an equal minimum amount of respect. Like existing in public space. Like being able to celebrate ourselves. Like being able to advocate for ourselves when something is wrong. Like being able to put up a flag Mm -hmm. that represents us to have our own events if your event gets media coverage why can't we get media coverage if you have trouble existing in a world where there are people who are different who do the exact same things that you do that's a you problem mm -hmm. stop making it ours We've got no time. We've got fabulous brunches to organize. <laughs> and it's like, and let's be honest, life is way more interesting and fun when you're sitting at the table where there is a fabulous brunch than looking outside, knocking on the window going, oh my God, I can't believe you're serving mimosas and that you have a tasteful decor. And what are you wearing? <laughs> Let that shit go. Let Come go. inside. And maybe you'll find a group of people that are caring, welcoming, loving, and that are happy to have pull up an extra chair and have you sit at their table. Because the last thing the gay community needs is yet another gay person saying we need more rights. We need people who are not gay, people who are different, standing with us. Mm -hmm. We are always willing to make room at our table for you. If you will just accept us. And again, we don't care when you arrive, so long as you get there. All right. It's a Nobody's... much better world if all of us are invited to sit at each other's tables. And nobody's forcing anybody to do anything. If you feel like you're being forced, that's a you problem. Maybe, maybe talk to your doctor about it because you might have a mental health issue. I know I have a number of mental health issues. I talked to my doctor about it. I'm on medication for it. I seek treatment when I realize I'm 
I'm, I don't know, like yesterday was a bad day. I was incapable of reaching out yesterday. Yesterday was a bad day. Today's a good day. Today will be a productive day. I felt terrible last night because I didn't get any of the things done yesterday that I had every intention to do because my mind wouldn't let me do them. For those who understand what it's like to, to, to battle the demon of depression and anxiety, and when they both start fighting with one another, pretty horrible time. So when I'm having a hard time, I seek help. Maybe, maybe you should too. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a comment here from this person, this kit. People just want to be left alone, but you push it into everything. I can't get away from gay stuff now. It's everywhere. But here you are in a gay space, not leaving us alone, pushing your stuff onto us. Well, uh, here you are gay, that it's not a in choice. our place you have made a choice to come someplace where you know the host is gay because this is not your first time here and complaining that everything's about gay stuff you can't get away you can't get away from it but you come here yeah so you don't want to get away from it do you you want to be exactly where it is so you can push your stuff down my throat. Funny how that works, eh? Stop looking at the behavior of others and look at what you are contributing to the situation. I feel I will go to jail if you burn a flag. Well, that's feeling. That's not a fact. If you want to know, try it. Facts don't care about your feelings, remember? Try it. You guys are the fuck your feelings demo, but you sure have big feelings all the time. Mm -hmm. And two, why would you want to get away from it? It's a natural part of the world. It's like trying to get away from gravity. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> or thermodynamics. They just exist. You're not going to have a world without it. You never had it. It never existed for anyone except for you somewhere in your mind. In your imagination, this magical, mystical world where there was nothing ever gay and you never had to see it or be exposed to it. It never existed. We were always here. We were less visible. We made our way in different ways. You had to hide in the for the longest time, for a long it was way time. more dangerous for us to just be our authentic selves 24-7. Mm -hmm. But this world you imagine never existed. It never existed. And you can't have it. Everybody who is gay or transgender or anywhere different on the sexual spectrum or gender identity spectrum from you, they're not all going to instantly vanish or go, oh, yes, yes, sorry, we went too fast. We'll go back and our that That is just not going to happen. It is not a realistic expectation, and all disappointment comes from unmet expectations, and all unresolved disappointment and sadness leads to fear and rage and anger eventually. It is poison. You are sipping from the poison cup. You are hurting yourself. You are condemning yourself to being miserable. You have other choices. And I sincerely pray and hope and wish for you yeah. the ability to live your life with joy, side by side, coexisting with people who have different views or live a different lifestyle than you do that maybe you don't understand and maybe don't want to know anything enough to be able to understand. But can you at least accept that we can live in the same space, breathe the same air, appear on the same media? That's all that's being asked of you. is for people to be allowed to exist 
without constant criticism and constantly having to justify that they have just as much right to be here and to speak for themselves as you do. Not more, not less, equal. Now, if we happen to be better organized or more adept at using the same tools or more effective with our voices, you can have that too. You just have to put in the work. Most Nobody's the, denying that to you. Most of the kids and cubs can't see the commentary from that specific individual because they're watching on a different feed. Yeah. On a YouTube feed, but a different feed. So, so this, and nobody's poking bears. The fact that you can't cope with the fact that people that are different exist is not you being provoked. It's you having issues that you need help to deal with in order to be able to exist as a person who is fully thriving in this world. It is not our responsibility to make you comfortable. No. No. It's not our responsibility. It's not our job to make you okay with it. And it's not our duty to make ourselves smaller to live smaller lives, to be quieter, to make ourselves invisible because you can't function. It's just not, it's not going to happen. And you can show up here every day. Yeah. See, I don't care if you're gay, just leave me alone. You first. <laughs> you first. You, know, you the, came up here and you brought this issue. Mm -hmm. You brought your grievance. This is all you. The whole reason we're talking about this, as long as we are, is you. And we didn't ban you. As I said, I wouldn't ban you as long as you were respectful. We didn't ban you from the main show. You're not being attacked. You're just being told that there's another way to see the world that's different than yours. And just like you don't accept the way we see the world, we don't accept the way you see the world. So we're going to agree to disagree. And please, again, okay, fine, I'm gay now. No, you're not. We don't need you on our team. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> but if you want to be, hey, you want to be gay for pay, you know, I'm, I'm told there's good money in it. So no, thanks. anyway, but see, this is the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing our community needs to deal with every damn day. Mm -hmm. Every damn day. People like this who believe that how they feel about something is so much more important and that the whole world has to stop to cater to their need. It's selfish. It's narcissistic. Mm -hmm. It's self-absorbed. It's whiny. It's needlessly negative. It's needlessly angry. It's weird. It's literally weird. It is. Normal people have no problem with the fact that people who are different exist and want to live happy lives. Normal people have no problem with that. This is ab normal. It is not a reasonable, measured, proportional response to the reality that people are living happy and fulfilled lives. It's a you problem. It's a you problem. And our community has spent many years with self-loathing, and the, oh, don't do anything that will frighten the neighbors. It's like, if you're going to go to that pride parade, 
don't leave your house in that drag costume. Wait till you get there and change in the bathroom and only show up there. And when the parade's over, like, listen, my God, don't be the person that gets snapped in a picture by the journalist to put you on the front cover and say Pride Parade, even within the gay community at that time. I remember that. Gee, we're fighting for our rights. Do you always have to put a drag queen like this? We hated ourselves. Mm -hmm. Closets are for clothes. That's it. That's it. Closets are for clothes. And sometimes skeletons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that we've moved from there, um, we're probably going to wrap up soon because yes, yeah, I got, we've got been at this for uh, two and a half hours, hours almost. Two hours. Um, but there's I've, I've got different. a few things to get sure done. thing. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I have a few things to get done today. I was going to highlight a an interesting story. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm just going to just discuss this quickly from uh, Charlie Angus, uh, NDP MP. And he says, this was interesting. He tweeted this out yesterday and, and, and it was covered from, by um, baytoday.ca, which is from Thunder Bay. When Pierre Polyev's conservatives start relying on propaganda films of Russian jets to sell their bring home the country we know campaign, it's time to call out their bullshit. None of the mainstream media are calling this out. CBC reported on it. CTV said the liberals are saying that they're Russian jets. CBC quoted Minister of Defense Bill Blair that it is a Russian, that they are Russian jets. It's not an opinion piece. It's, this, is, this is facts. So when you've, got, when you've got prominent members of parliament, they're starting to call out what the community or what the community, what the... Um, conservatives are doing might be time to pay attention hmm. i'm seeing linda goes i don't know douglas's shirt is too fabulous to be contained in a closet <laughs> hmm. speaking of that by the way your eager beaver has a recommendation um if you're a billy eilish fan um some people may not well if you're a billy eilish fan you know but for those people who just know the name do not she came out recently hmm. so um and, uh, Did she buy though? Because she was totally I'm, in love with with Justin Bieber for the longest time. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking she's full out on Team Girl now. Oh, okay. Um, and she re she uh, recently released a duet with Charlie XCX. Mm -hmm. I've not seen it yet. It's a song called Guess. Mm -hmm. I really recommend it. Not only is it a banger, but if you listen to the lyrics. Basically, the song starts, you want to guess the color of my underwear. You want to know what I got going on down there. Now, the video is very sexy. Mm. You got underwear flying all over the place. And there's tons of underwear and bras and whatnot like this. All the underwears and bras that are in the video that were not worn are being donated to women's shelters. Oh, okay. okay. But there are some lyrics in there. Yes. At one point, Billie Eilish says, Charlie likes boys, but she knows I'd hit it. And they're walking next to each other. And as she says that, Charlie XCX gets this smirk. And <laughs> wow. So like this. And then there's a cut of Billy, X, uh, Billy Eilish going, Charlie, call me if you're with it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a hopelessly heterosexual woman, mm -hmm. Charlie XCX, and a very gay woman doing a duet together in which one says, like this, we're friends, but I'm thirsty. If you said yes, I would totally tap that. And rather than being offended, it's going, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm all that. <laughs> like this. And it ends with, because the song's called Guess, mm -hmm. you want to guess if we're serious about this song. Interesting. It is brilliant piece. Well, of, you, ex, of acceptance and whatnot and it's a banger of a song too so i'll check it out but have you seen for... the video for janelle monet's lipstick lover no i have not okay I'll, I'll uh i'll find a version of it and put it in the chat um i don't smoke but you might want a cigarette after this <laughs> oh it needs a post-coital cookie um it's very steamy let's put it that way there's Ooh, a link la, to la, it in the la. chat 
<laughs> and by the way, this is not the first time Charlie XCX does this. She also has a song called Gone, That's I think, good. with Christine from Christine of the Queens, Christine and the Queens. And again, if you watch that video, there is way more sexual energy and tension between them two in that video than I've seen in many videos with a man and a woman. Yes. And again, two completely sexual orientations, and they are able to generate that type of chemistry. Sorry, I had the wrong link. Whoops. Uh, that's not it. Come on, let's just paste. There we go. All right. So Here's the link. Okay. Now, there is one little piece of news that I wanted to mention uh, before we go, um, because it's really big news. Um, it seems that the people of the Caldwell First Nation are going home. Um, they have been fighting for about 230 years to reaccess their ancestral lands in southwestern Ontario. And um, it seems that the project of reestablishing that is uh, reached a major milestone. Um, it's near, um, it's on the shores of Lake Erie. It's um, the lands of the Caldwell stretch from the mouth of the Tr Tr Detroit River along the north shore of Lake Erie. And um, they settled a lamb claim in 2011 in which the First Nation bought an empty plot in southwestern Ontario and they started building. Chief uh, Larry Johnson said, uh, I've wanted this all my life. It's good times for everyone. Uh, as he was holding back tears because a community of about 60 people by mid-September will finally be living on the reserve. Chief Mary Duckworth um, says uh, she's soaking in this hard-earned moment, uh, but she's thinking about the future. They're hoping that eventually they'll have a community center and a school on it. But yes, slowly but surely, if you are paying attention, peace, love, fairness, equality are breaking out around the world. Slowly but surely. All right. Incrementally. Eh? Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right, kids and cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you loved listening to us because we love making this show. <laughs> Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And even those of you who were with us today who particularly did not like the subject matter, thank you for coming and tell your peeps and poops all about us. Yes, thank you. Because, again, so long as you come into our space and treat the other members of the damn fam with respect and not first assume the worst of them, you are welcome at our table. Now, I will make a note here that yesterday, I did not see it when it happened, but I read the chat, and there was somebody here who comes here regularly to say things, to basically put out bait for people to react to, who uh, posted something like, you know what, I'm not going to do the something like, I'm actually going to uh, get it verbatim because we did not see it when it happened. I did, and, and I tried to uh, subtly address it with you because you didn't see it. I was trying to point it out to you because I didn't want to yeah. highlight it, right? I did not see it, but literally uh, posted the words into the chat Democracy only existed from 1933 to 1940 in Germany. So that individual has been banned. Uh, Sansi Siewicz was, uh, who has the wrench, banned that, banned that individual along yes. with... Uh, I said Saucy, but for full transparency, I want people to know that I sent Saucy a note, get Saucy, saying, just to note that this person, if this person pops up again, just instant forever block. This from that person is entirely unacceptable. Nobody needs to deal with that crap. Nobody yeah. comes here to be exposed to that. I hope you're doing well, sending you big hugs. So um, there are lines. Mm -hmm. that, that That's one of them. Yeah. That's one of them. 
All right, so just wanted to be transparent. Another issue of transparency, I did say it on the Twitter feed, there was uh, a claim at one point that uh, Michelle Ferrari had deleted her tweet about the child trafficking thing. Turns out that wasn't true. Like this, we did some more investigation when we saw that there was a doubt. So we eliminated it, but we posted something saying that we had seen it. We investigated it further, found out it was incorrect, and we have removed it. So, transparent, we're allowed to make mistakes. You own up to them, say that you've done them. All right, so so, so for anybody who uh, saw that thing yesterday, um, and if it happens to still be on uh, the chat, if you're watching the show uh, from yesterday, if it happens to appear again, uh, we are so sorry uh, that we didn't catch it at the time, but we have seen it and we have dealt with it. Okay. All right. Just wanted to be clear. We, we, we want to be completely above board with what we do when we retract something uh, and when we take an action like that, and, or if we miss something, because sometimes we're just doing the show like this and things go by mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we don't see it. So um, I try and I'm, catch I'm, everything. But. Yes. But I am sorry. And, and as we grow in popularity and as we grow in listenership, you know, the chats are going to scroll by faster. Mm hmm. Uh, we're probably going to have less opportunity to see them. So these are things that will happen again. But I want you to know that when we look back and we see it, we will correct it. We will note the names, right? And uh, But yes, we, need, we all need to be vigilant. And again, kits and cubs, if you ever see that, please, please do not take the bait. Just point out to us that there's something going on and we will handle it. Okay. All right. Um, so sharing is caring. Word of mouth is precious. Just tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you would like to make sure that you do not miss an episode, you do not have to, thanks to the Ray Girl, because she sponsored our pod page. If you go on down to pod page, not pod cage, somebody reminded us yesterday, that's an entirely different site, but podpage.com. And if you click subscribe there, or if you scan that uh, QR code, that's just appeared under my chin. And then you go and click subscribe. When we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. So you do not have to miss a show at all. At all. There you go. How much How much fun is that? We mm -hmm. make it so easy for you. And if you would like to support us in other ways, well then, uh, you need to make like Kit Elaine. And have a terrific day, everyone. Surf on down to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page as 5,300 of you have so far. Thank you so much. And play with our buttons because that makes us happy. Like, share, subscribe. If you click them, if you flick them. Hey, if you make like Kit Cassie and lick them. We don't judge. We don't judge. Let your freak flags fly. You can sit at our table no matter what it is you do to our buttons. There you go. And if you would like to help us in other ways, that QR code that is by Mr. Grizzly's head will bring you to our tip jar. And Maybe even the uh, person on uh, the chat today with whom we engaged a lot, because you're so welcome, maybe you would like to make a little donation. Got bills to pay. Why not? It's clearly you're getting something out of the show. So why not encourage us to do more? Our tip chart. Is available at our coffee page, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. I hope you all see what I did there, kids and cups. <laughs> um, so, but in a, in a more serious note, if you would like to help us uh, do this show and encourage us because it does have costs for us, and uh, we just recently bought a new computer, so uh, any bit helps, and we are grateful. Yeah, because I'm about 800 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Um, uh, for some reason, uh, our money is locked in PayPal, and I've been uh, trying to deal with them for the last seven days. And it says, like, I cannot seem to link a bank account to the PayPal account to extract the money from it. And I keep on saying, I've been, but you haven't even tried yet. I have tried 15 freaking times. And mm. this is the third time I get circled back to the beginning and I'm looping around. I'm like literally having Groundhog Day. Please just let me talk to a real person and fix this damn thing. <laughs> so, so far, the money is trapped. Um, so, but there you go. Uh, but if you have a little couple uh, cents there, we really appreciate that. 
But if you don't, hey, that's okay, because the gift of your attention even those of you who are choosing to give us a lot of attention, is very appreciated. So, and we love to hear from you so much so that we even include you in our show. So, if you want to talk to us, True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com is how you reach us by email, at True Eager on our Twitter feed, on our YouTube page, you can leave a comment, or True North Eager Beaver on Facebook. We love hearing from you. We try to read everything. We not always respond, but we do read everything. And, you know, stories, ideas. Uh, if you've got some g- good stuff happening in your life too, right? Like we mm-hmm. want to hear about that. Or for example, you know, if you happen to have a small home-based business. And you need to advertise. Right. You need to advertise like this. Come see us like this. We'll find a way with this. If, you know, if you produce art and you have an Etsy shop or something like that, like come see us. Let, let, let's make a deal. We are right. looking for more sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, we, no, we, we, you know, you don't have to big, be a big multinational or something, you know. Like this. Goodness, no. We've got stuff for you, too. Mm-hmm. We've got stuff for you, too. All right. Um, yeah, you know what? Someone is being, uh, no, someone's just being a little dick. Um, anyway, not cool. Bro, um, bro, not cool. I'm unemployed. You fancy okay. yourself clever? No, 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 no. No, I'm just uh, just saying. The reason we ask for donations is because I'm broke and unemployed. Right. And just, I got to pay for this shit somehow. Yeah, I know. I know. Just no. That's. that's no, we'll let it go. We'll, that's we'll bait. Yeah. That's bait. That's just put out there to get a rise. Hmm. That's what these people are experts at. Hmm. All right, we don't play that here. Um, so yeah, let us know what you think. We're always happy to hear from you because democracy is something that you do. You got some by elections coming up, right? So make sure that you do what you need to do to research your candidates, to plan your vote, to help volunteer at your polling station because we need you. And hey, consider running for something, right? All right. It could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. And when I say it could be a tough world out there, it's like not only is life hard enough, but there are people that every now and then will come around and decide that they want to fixate on you to try to make your life a little tougher. Show grace. And then go on and live your best life unbothered. Those are my words of wisdom. Mr. Grizzly. Do you have words of wisdom? Yeah. Because of the day I had yesterday and the difficulties I had last night trying to do an ASMR show. I say this hindsight being 2020, of course. Reach out for help when you need it. I'm terrible at reaching out for help when I need it. Terrible. I'm always good at coming back after the fact and saying, listen, I, I need some help. But it's always after the fact when I'm, when I'm drowning in an ocean of despair and emptiness, I can't ask for help. I'm incapable of it. So hopefully if you're in a similar situation, you are capable of asking for help. And if not, you can reach out to me on my, uh, ASMR channel and I'll be happy to try and help you in any way I can. There's a QR code to it if you want to link to it at any point in time. But yesterday was a rough day for me. I made it through and today is feeling pretty good. So I'm glad you're feeling good. Thanks. I'm glad you're feeling good, my friend. All right, Mr. Grizzly, cue the cock and we'll have a little Easter egg for you. Okay. I can, uh, I can do these things, you know. (laughs) <laughs> you are listening to a true north eager beaver media incorporated podcast the true north eager beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors the misfy mysteries from corvid moon publishing your source for science fiction fantasy and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters canadiantarot.com their uniquely canadian online eclectic tarot community and the Peppermaster, 
Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Kit Moan asks in the chat, how do we make a direct donation? If you want to make a direct donation, um, simply um, an interact transfer sent to truenorthagerbeaver at gmail.com yeah, if you email. will lead to a direct donation. So that's a, that if, you, if you would like to do that, that then we're, we're good with that too as well. All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, just a under 10 second little clip, but I'm sure we talked about this a bit today. Just wanted to put this on the screen. We'll we'll address this in just a second. Um, from playing with 3D. Oh yes. I was raised to think asking for help was a sign of weakness, and it has been a huge detriment to my life. Detriment to my life. I get it. Yeah. And, and even though I know that it's not a sign of weakness, there's still that indelible stamp on my mind that you know you feel weak when you do it. So you know, I understand. I really do. Let's Thank have a look at this. That. Yeah, you're welcome, and, and thank you for uh, for sharing that with us, playing with 3D. We appreciate it. Let me just share this uh, cute little video that I guess a lot of people are a little bent out of shape over it for some reason. Is it corn nuts over there, Tim? Is it? Oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's that. the best. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's the fun. Is it corn nuts over there? <laughs> Cholin, 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 baby, keep on cholin. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everyone. Um, one more thing. Oh yes, please. I'm going to put this on the screen because it's. I'm I'm only going to let you hear. This is from Horizon Ottawa. We have reason to believe that the Ford government will be making devastating changes to safe consumption sites and safe supply. Yes. This will only cause further harm and increase strains on our healthcare system. Join the rally outside the Shaw Center. That is actually today from 1 to 5 p.m. Community call out. Premier Doug Ford and Minister Sylvia Jones are in Ottawa to announce devastating changes to safe consumption and overdose yes. prevention in Ontario. Now, we don't actually know what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. So there's, they're being really provocative here and... I, I, I'm I'm a little troubled by the way they're writing this mm -hmm. because it could attract the wrong people to the demonstration mm -hmm. and something bad could happen. Yes. I, I, I think this is this is really inflammatory. It's very provocative and I don't agree with their wording here. But mm -hmm. I think it's important that people, if you can go from one to five PM Tuesday, August twentieth, twenty twenty four, that is today at the Shaw Center at Daly and Colonel By Drive. It's attached to the Rideau Center next to the Weston Hotel in downtown Ottawa, right next to the Rideau Canal. If you have a chance to go out there and, and uh, peacefully assemble and protest if they are going to do something bad to healthcare yet again, by all means. Or just generally protest in favor of safe supply and harm reduction. There you go. Right? You don't have to protest against something. You can protest for something. It's usually more positive. Mm. All right. Have a brief, horrific day, everyone. You will, don't uh, take the bait. Don't take the bait. No, not doing it. We'll see you later. <laughs>